Hey, welcome back. So here is that part all put together and I try to keep the finish a little nicer than the previous one. And uh, yeah, this was all, this is all just straight bore drilling, none of the PEC stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah, I totally know uh, PEC drilling and uh, probably gonna use that on some stuff for the motor mounts. But yeah, I just really wanna mess around and uh, see what the spindle could do. Um, totally like the six millimeter holes, 6.3, which are these ones here. Like it's at 7,000 RPM, uh, 350 millimeters uh, a minute. It's on the verge of stalling. So that's totally like, pack drilling is the way to go on that. These other ones, the smaller ones, uh, they were five millimeter. And like if I had a more rigid, like a proper, like a proper drill bit for the machine, like that's more rigid and carbide. It could probably handle it fine and uh, probably give me a nicer finish. Like these ones, well, I have threads tapped in there, so it's hard to tell now. But it kind of kind of messed the hole up a bit, kind of squirreled all over the place, walked a bit. So it's not not that great, but like this thing is just a giant spacer anyway. It's not It's not really critical. It's like I live in a bird aviary. Here's the chips up close from that drilling. And you can see that they're getting pretty thin. You can tell by, you see how the, the ends of them is all kind of tattered and breaking apart. Here's some proper ones off the drill press. And you can see how nice these are compared to this one. I think in a peck drilling situation, um, if I cranked up the feed uh, currently, this is at probably one third the ideal feed for the RPM. Um, if I brought up a lot more, it'd probably make a proper chip and the pack would be small enough that it wouldn't ramp down and stall at the spindle. And, you know, pack drilling like partial retracts uh, would probably be enough for the spindle to ramp back up and probably give you a better, better time with this. I think what I'll do in one of the uh, videos in the future, I want to do some like uh, G-code tutorials with uh, Linux CNC. So I'll probably cover some of the PEC drilling cycles that they got canned in there and then go over some of that stuff and see what we can do with aluminum. This is where this piece goes. It just goes in there. And what I have left to do on it is just skim the top off. I got to take this one out and just measure the top here and get the correct height and then I can Get this one down to size and plop it in. This part was a real champ. It lasted the whole machine build from the very beginning. So there's a the replacement. I don't know what to do with the end stop. I might put it on the back side for now. Somewhere down there. Here's a, here's the result of that uh, mystery steel that I cut yesterday I think it was and I don't know what this is I got this out of the scrap in at Metal Supermarket and uh, somebody in the comments said it could be um, 1010 or 1008 steel like a low grade low carbon steel uh, it's super interesting how dull it is let me see if I can get this on camera You can see here, like there's absolutely no reflection. Well, there's, there is at the right at the angle, but you can see there's really nothing going on. And if I hold it up close, just when it's focusing, you can see the tool marks. And they're similar to the aluminum. Where'd the aluminum one go? On the aluminum one, it's way easier to see. So you can see the spacing. Um, the spacing is similar just because of the, the feed and speed of this, but with uh, going through the steel I can I can go a lot slower than I could with the aluminum. The aluminum I had to just, I just had to run this thing just cranked at 10,000 millimeters a minute, which is kind of insane for this. And only then the, uh, like the dull carbide insert, like it could make a chip on this thing. But yeah, this is that's how that looked at. It's 
like there's nothing to it it's super smooth just because the step over was one millimeter on a ball nose so it's just like there's nothing there i'll run the surface over on my poor man's uh flat stones and we can see what it looks like if you spend some time you can get these things really flat this is like the with the three surfacing method and you'll know when you get it right when you can see on this aluminum barbarisa wheel that it's reflecting So with the ball nose, uh, you can see all the dark spots there. That's where it was polished on the wheel. So it's, there's a bit of a low spot in the middle and then just high spots on the sides. Uh, this is with one millimeter step over and yeah, you really don't get much. You don't get much any high spots compared to, this is on the aluminum with the ball nose. And this is, I think this was three millimeters, three or four millimeter step over. And you can see the difference. I'm not going to put this on the stone just because I want it to look nice still. It's like that new car smell you get. Amazon was having a special on nitro gloves. So it came in pink. I love the name Pink Paws. Got my pink paws. Here's what that ball nose looked like after running it through all that aluminum and the steel. And like the, the tip is still like it was never sharp to begin with. It was kind of a dull one. But it's held up really good. Like there's there's nothing on it that's like it's not broken, not chipped or or worn from what I can tell. I have some other ones coming. I have a BAP a BAP 300R coming, and I have a smaller one that uses JDMT inserts, and it is a it's similar to the BAP, but uh, the BAP, the the BAP has uh, the one I have is 12 millimeters, and this one is eight millimeters. So. That'll be interesting to try out. For the BAP, I also got uh, PCB and CDN inserts. Looking at this bar again, this totally looks like that Beskar material in Star Wars on the Mandalorian show. Could probably sell this thing for a lot of money to Star Wars fans. Also, the other day I got some gauge blocks and I um, carefully measured uh, these ones and these were two one hundredth of a millimeter, so 0 0.02. Uh, out compared to the gauge block and the gauge blocks I believe they were um, They're imports. Uh, I think they're grade two. So but like it's they're plus minus like half a micron to 0.2 microns So totally more than enough for the stuff I need to use I would have thought these things were going to be out by a lot more especially like over different ranges but measuring these things with uh, multiple gauge blocks, it was consistently two one hundredths of a millimeter out. So I don't know if it's possible to take these things and correct them and calibrate them. I highly doubt it. But yeah, it's good to good to finally uh, have like some references of known lengths to work off of. Once I get this part on the machine, I am going to go back and retram the uh, spindle and the Z assembly, and also check the vice out again. I had a, uh, well, I had the mishap with uh, trying to drill um, 900 millimeters a minute into aluminum. And that probably put a little bit of, uh, I probably tweaked the, the head of this thing a little bit. But then like a few days later, I was milling this thing out. I don't know which side, doesn't matter. And I had a bad tool height offset uh, when I changed tools and I, I ramped this thing at three meters a second uh, down and hit the vice jaw. And like I had this thing fully clamped and I know I had it like, like I had, I don't know, maybe half an inch. So half an inch uh, on there and it totally just pushed this thing straight down into the vice. And luckily I didn't have any uh, parallels in there or else it wouldn't have been pushed down and probably would have trashed this thing. The end mill, that was in there, I think it was a six millimeter, and it got totally obliterated, like it just shattered into a million pieces. Uh, the alignment of this thing, like it was it was uh, down the center of this, and then it was, like I had detected off the side, so like uh, the center of the spindle hit the, the jaws. And uh, yeah, luckily no damage, like the thing still runs, but I totally have to have like tweaked this thing, and that might have been the cause of some of the 
the drilling in that last video of these holes where the bit would just walk all over as it went in. Mind you, I'm using like the cheapest drill bits to do this and like this is just high speed steel uh, with some kind of coating on them. But yeah, these things, like it, it's certainly not ideal for, for running on a CNC machine like this. Like regardless is like if you're drilling like the way I was doing it or even if you're just pack drilling, like these are just gonna walk all over you. I did spot all the holes. I used this little spotting drill. Uh, but this thing is, this is not ideal either. It's too, diameter is too small. Like compare that. This is, I don't know, this could be like a three millimeter. And I believe this is a, this is Imperial, but it's, let's see if we can get on. Yeah, so it's a quarter inch high speed steel. Um, and also the, uh, the angle here. So like when you're spot drilling, these gotta line up. So this is like a 45. And I believe they call this a 118, but like these should, these should also align. That way when you're going in, like spot it on this one, this one goes in and the flutes of this one are gonna catch the edges. And once it catches, as it goes in, like that's gonna walk it to one side or another. And I think that was the problem I was mostly having with this stuff, drilling these holes. So here's some carbide drill bits, uh, 4.2 and five millimeter. And yeah, like these are great, but these, like you need a really rigid machine to run these things. The tips of them can shatter real easy. And I have some that just like completely get obliterated. Mind you, I damaged all these on the CNC machine when it had the uh, issues with the uh, gantry risers and it was way more flexible and, and uh, not, as, not nearly as rigid as this whole setup now. Uh, I think if I some ran some carbide drill bits on this machine, I think would have a lot better time. But I think on a less rigid setup, if you're peck drilling, uh, you might want to consider high speed steel because high speed steel, like it, like as you saw in the video, it can it can bend and like it's very forgiving. Uh, it's not gonna shatter on you. Whereas this stuff, if it catches on a on a side badly, you're just gonna shatter the tip. And once you do that, like these things are kind of toast. This vise, I never intended to mount it like this for so long, and I'd be very surprised if it didn't move at all. Um, it's very likely that it got twisted a bit um, due to some of the cutting. I think I might go with my original idea of rotating this thing and then dropping it onto here and then welding two tubes along here in this direction and then uh, drilling, drilling some larger holes into this thing and uh, threading these into some uh, machine nuts on those two tubes and having just a much more permanent solution for this thing. So I'll wrap this video up. Uh, those last two drilling videos, they're really also kind of like Cunningham's law in uh, the wild on the internet. And uh, so those two videos, probably good resources for peck drilling in the comment section because over time they're going to get lots of comments on how to do peck drilling. But yeah, that's uh, it for this video and I will see you guys in the next one.